thank you sir for the invite and i have submitted my phd and i am going to get awarded this year so uh, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, at the outset i would like to thank the members organizing committee for um, uh, giving this talk to me and uh, um, such a big platform especially dr bansi sabu and dr amit gupta so uh, i would be presenting on surgical management of diabetic foot ulcers and uh, it's a uh, diabetic wounds are very complicated and complex and they present a uh, challenging situ situations to uh, for the physicians and the surgeons to treat them but it is important at the same time that we pick them early and we find them out and we examine the feet regularly which may be missed in a overcrowded opd uh, in a especially in a primary health center and where these examinations are usually missed and due to the unawareness of the uh, healthcare professionals also and uh, uh, no instructions and uh, the hallmark of diabetic foot in india and asian countries uh, is infection uh, particularly due to practices in india there are practices of barefoot walking uh, application of mud or any homemade pultis or remedies uh, then also their diabetic uh, uh, foot ulcer may harbor maggots and the red ants so uh, so every 20 seconds a limb is lost somewhere to diabetes and uh, deaths of from the diabetic foot ulcer they are uh, equal to or even exceed the deaths from certain cancers such as prostate cancer um, and uh, thyroid cancers so uh, what is peculiar about these wounds are that these wounds are stalled they are they attain chronicity due to inflammatory excess excess of the inflammatory mediators are present and this uh, the immunopathy is existing there so it prevents wound contraction and epithelialization of these ulcers coupled with the typical structural and uh, foot anatomy which undergo certain changes due to non enzymatic tissue glycation so these compartments medial lateral and central compartment are surrounded by bony and facial compartment which make them rigid and the uh, uh, the pressure mounts if there is any infection in these compartments coupled with the end artery disease they have these uh, infected foot ulcers have a poor outcome and uh, we know that the infection from the foot may traverse up the leg and uh, this is usually uh, due to the small trivial infections or the forefoot injuries uh, that the infection of the foot becomes the leg and these are the actually minor foot lesions they progress uh, they progress and lead to widespread infections the initial lesion however is just a break in the skin envelope so what the, these lesions appear to be are the tip of the iceberg what you see them with your naked eyes and actually there is massive destruction underneath so they should not be underestimated so for limb salvage we need to have a guideline based approach provided by IWGDF guidelines in 2019 proper categorization or classification of the lesions and you should not only evaluate the patient as a whole but also examine the feet for LOPS that is loss of protective sensation peripheral arterial disease or palpation of the pulses and also um, examination of the ulcers if they are present and um, we have you have to practice a multidisciplinary approach for better outcomes so diagnosing uh, according to these guidelines the it is uh, uh, the cardinal signs of inflammation they actually decide whether a foot infection is present and uh, hospitalization of the patients with severe and uh, moderate foot infections uh, that which is based on the criteria of the peri uh, wound skin erythema and the systemic signs and symptoms these patients are considered for hospitalization apart from the bioinflammatory markers and advanced imaging studies which need to be done in these patients so the aim of surgical uh, uh, management in DF, uh, dfus so this is to uh, achieve and maintain weight bearing plantigrade foot so when you do the surgery and when the foot are in the severe or moderately infected stage you have to resort to surgery to clear up the infection and we should at attain a plantigrade biomechanically viable foot at the end and to restore and maintain adequate soft tissue envelope or the reconstruction is essential and to abolish and minimize the risk factors which threaten so deformity correction should also be taken at the same time so so as to prevent the recurrences the process of surgical debridement in which the sharp debridement is considered much better to the um, mechanical mechanical uh, debridement or the autolytic debridements and it is uh, found to clear off the necrotic non viable tissues uh, we can see in this case a good debridement was done with an amputation of the great uh, toe and uh, uh, we got a good granulations similarly here and skin grafting was done so uh, we have these deeper foot infection or in severe foot infection where we these are infections in contiguity of the soft tissue they spread to the bony structures also and as a result the uh, deeper in the deeper infections uh, these uh, um, we need an amputation and but these are the best thing is that they are preventable if you plan, detect them early or if you plan a good surgical and uh, medical uh, treatment 
So in cases of suspect osteomyelitis, we have uh, the sausage like toe discharged from the ulcer and a probe to bone test would be positive and uh, even the x-ray would have uh, the width and the depth of the ulcer uh, more than 3 mm deep and uh, width more than 2 cm would also indicate that the possibility of osteomyelitis is there. In uh, patients with uh, osteomyelitis and uh, deep tissue infection, so we have, they usually have more length of hospitalization, more chances of amputation, particularly in the deeper group of infections. So look, coming to the last uh, box, the orange color box, uh, we have the failed surgical treatment, uh, which forms the basis of the surgical approach that is intolerance to antibiotics due to renal or hepatic causes. The surgical uh, approach, uh, the surgical approach in these cases have a high uh, percentage of limb salvage um, and um, it limits the or replaces the action of antibiotics given for a longer time. Surgical offloading techniques by which we mean that uh, the, not the deformities or the um, areas of elevated pressure, they are um, offloaded and as a result we get the ulcer in a healed state. So these are minimally invasive procedures where you get good results with surgical offloading. And limb and life-threatening infections, spreading infections to the soft tissues, destroyed soft, uh, soft tissue envelope, in th those, these cases also surgery has to be resorted. Progressive infection, progressive bony destruction on the x-ray, bone protruding out through the wound, open or infected soft tissue uh, or the joint spaces are exposed, synovial uh, membranes exposed, there is systemic signs and symptoms, prosthetic heart valves. We need to clear these infections with the help of surgery. So, uh, the current uh, trend is to uh, adopt a surgical intervention and the choices may be debridement followed by with or without amputation and in debridement it's important to do a radical debridement and a limb amputation and surgical offloading procedures to uh, uh, prevent the skin from, uh, prevent them to um, uh, these elevated plantar pressure areas to break down and also help in the ulcer healing and also restore the soft tissue cover. So conservative or limited surgery, we mean that it has to be combined with the antibiotic therapy and um, it is the supposed to be the most, uh, most appropriate treatment. Nowadays, we are resorting to this only rather than doing a wide uh, unnecessary uh, destruction of the tissues. So uh, only the infected wound or the non infected bone or the non-viable tissues are re uh, removed. But no amputation of any part of the bone is unnecessarily taken up. So multidisciplinary team approach is however, it gives us very good results in these feet and uh, that should be adopted. It prevents the amputation and also allows the ulcer to heal. So we have this uh, on the right hand side, we have a uh, fit foot, uh, foot which we commonly encountered with an infected toe and uh, surgical removal of these uh, digits that particularly if it, the infection is in the distal phalanx or in the middle phalanx, then we just go for a disarticulation of the toe. We do not do any ray amputation. If spreading the infection is spreading beyond the proximal phalanx and going to the metatarsals, then only we attempt a ray amputation. So we have to be very clear about the uh, extent of the spread. And then you have to combine certain uh, amputation procedure with adjunctive procedures like tendoachillus slendering. These are also used for surgical offloading and establish a biomechanically available, uh, biomechanically viable foot. So here we can see a wet gangrene of the second toe, and this was due to uh, it was this was due to the toe ring infection and resulting in a chronic osteomyelitis. And then another tissue where is a peronychia was neglected, leading to gangrene and osteomyelitis of the great toe. So surgical procedures may be emergency, curative, prophylactic, elective. The emergency procedures, they are, have a very high rate of uh, amputation and also the chances of proximal amputation may also be higher in these cases. So these are uh, procedures which are uh, performed to limit the acute spread of infection. The partial amputation or the intrafoot uh, amputations, they are the first option for limb uh, salvage and we should limit ourselves to the foot or the distal or the minor or the partial foot amputations or the intrafoot amputations, they are more in vogue and the uh, number of major uh, amputations or the proximal amputations have, have reduced. Because the operative procedures here carry a mortality uh, less than 1%, they can be done under local or regional blocks and the 5 year survival rates are also supposed to be good. And also the patient has an independent gait which is very important, particularly for an old patient. So the hallux amputation we can see, and then the closure with the available skin flap, if it is viable, transmetatarsal amputation for the lesser toes. So, so the biomechanically viable foot with only great toe salvage can also be taken up, which uh, bears the one third of the body weight. So major amputations we can see. Now minimally invasive surgery, they have uh, 
um, then again they are performed through the smaller incisions and uh, this reduces the uh, um, uh, chances of uh, risk of further infections, vascular complications and wound healing problems. Surgical offloading we will be talking shortly. It does not uh, however need uh, uh, osteosynthesis. So we have the tendoachillis lengthening procedures, um, uh, metatarsal head resections, osteotomy, correction of bone deformities, and silicon injections, callus debridement. We yeah, are just finishing. So for the various grade two minor foot ulcers, four foot ulcers, midfoot, and the heel ulcers, we perform the surgical offloading, offload which reduces the pressure under bony prominence. So we can see the interphalangeal joint uh, ulcers for the hallux limitus which can be uh, done with the uh, surgical of offloading of metatarsal osteotomy. Then FHL tenotomy where uh, we can for the apical of the toe ulcers or for the mallet and, uh, and the hammer toes and the claw toes. FDL tenotomy for the apical foot ulcers. Percutaneous flexor tenotomy can be performed in the OPD with the help of a needle. You can see that by inserting of the needle at the joint, then claw toe correction with the girdled stone procedure, selective plantar fascia release so as to minimize the four tissue four foot pressures and also allow the ulcers in the four foot to heal. This can be performed again as an OPD procedure by cutting off the plant, uh, prominent flex, plantar flexor creases. Then metatarsal head ulcers. Again, we go for the metatarsal osteotomy. Tendoeclis restoration, tendoeclis lengthening, tendoeclis gap can be fulfilled with the fascia letter graft. Then again the uh, four foot ulcers, metatarsal osteotomy, Keller's gap for the um, ulcers uh, in the interphalangeal joints, hallux limitus, where we remove the base of the proximal phalanx. Charcot foot reconstructive surgery for the collapsed foot exostectomy itself reduces the pressure and reconstruction with the help of uh, beaming and by restoring the uh, foot cover or exostectomy reconstruction of the charcoal foot it's a complicated surgery and um, here the medical treatment fails so local flap advancements can be done then we can do the skin grafting as in the first uh, followed by debridement followed by skin grafting then we can see the post angioplasty uh, debridement ssg and then local flaps. So vascularity of the uh, flaps has to uh, has to be assessed. We have to see whether the revascularization need is there or not, and take care of that. Otherwise, the wound is not going to heal. Reverse sural artery flap for the heel cover. So uh, multidisciplinary approach is essential for limb salvage and may prevent the amputation by approximately eighty to ninety percent. I think the summary uh, summarizing the. Surgical plan depends upon the stage of diabetic foot disease. At presentation, high index of suspicion about a widespread disease is a must for diagnosis. And um, most DFUs heal, only a quarter of them will need amputation. Sharp surgical deprivement is the mainstay of treatment. It should be early, aggressive and radical. Minimally invasive surgery has better outcomes. The primary goal of amputation is eradication of infection, removal of non-viable tissues and functional and healed residual stump. It should be viewed as a re reconstructive procedure. Intrafoot amputations and disarticulation, that is a partial amputations, are advantageous over the proximal amputation. They allow direct weight bearing, greater independence of gait and energy conserving, conserving gait. Reconstructive surgery prior to prior revascularization is a must and these may be needed for a better healing and to uh, for uh, ambulation of the patient. Surgical offloading techniques, they take care, they involve the correction of the deformities and they reduce the elevated plantar pressure and allow the um, wound to heal. So thank you for the patient hearing.